Hello dear viewers and welcome back to the channel. Um, so as you can see I'm a, an honest to god uh, determined tech hoarder <laughs> and this is my Panasonic TZ7. Um, this is my second Lumix Panasonic Lumix camera and I thought it to be the second, uh, well, um, full-fledged, uh, not professional, but serious camera. Yeah, if you can think about it, this soapbox camera in 2008 was still top tier, at least to my mind, and in the current social setup of my country. Uh, we didn't have much access to tech and what we did have we thought of it as very expensive when new. Consequently we used a lot of second-hand tech stuff from the Western Europe. Um, this is mainly the reason why I have so much junk but uh, tech junk but I was quite impressed mainly by the construction of this uh, camera so it was all metal and very rigid, very, very solid, very pleasant to hold in hand. Uh, it was um, it was heavy but not too heavy. It had that solidity to it. Well, you know the thing, all metal construction, um, steel and uh, what have you. So yeah, uh, by the way, quick uh, spec, uh, quick spec um, description, no touch screen here. Uh, 12 uh, times zoom, um, autofocus, no manual focus on this thing, uh, obviously. So don't really look too much into the tech. So an image sensor of 6.13 by 4.6 millimeters CCD with 12.7 million photo sites, whatever that means. Sorry, I'm just reading off Google. I'm not that professional in uh, delivering you uh, actual data, so apologies for that. So what that meant was it had a 10.1 megapixels a sensor, effective sensors, uh, Vario Elmar lens, whatever that is. Um, so yeah, it filmed um, in uh, AVH, uh, AVCHD, so basically um, not full HD but 720p HD ready. So uh, as a photo, as a photo shooter, it was actually quite good back then. Uh, phones couldn't really rival with this thing. Um, it didn't perform well in low light. It was it, it had a lot of noise in um, at night time and stuff like that. And while well, lack of manual focus did hurt the quality of the image, so they didn't feel uh, quite as they didn't feel artsy or professional in the very least. They were sort of run of the mill images, but back then they were something else. You must understand that uh, 2008 to 2010 um, mobile phones barely hit the 1.3 um, megapixel barrier and these were still beasts in terms of you know holiday and uh, um, exotic place shooting especially f by the fact that uh, you could operate them fairly easily so you didn't have to uh, rely too much on uh, um, um, adjusting it, basically a point-and-shoot camera as it's often known. So uh, things to note, it had dual microphones, not that it mattered quite that much. Uh, the zoom is, let me just uh, turn it on and uh, yeah, so I don't have an SD card right now in it, so I can't record more than four pictures. But the zoom itself uh, extended quite a lot, so the zoom lens. Um, don't ask me about aperture or stuff like that, because I understand how it works now. I do have a professional grade camera. I have a Lumix GH4 and I plan to f film, do an episode on that. 
and my trials and tribulations, if you will, how I managed to learn to use it fairly adequately. But I'm not so proficient as to explain to you the whole process of photography and stuff like that. One thing that's wrong with this camera, and I don't know why, um, this lens cover is stuck on closed. So I can force it open, I think, but it doesn't want to stay open. I don't know what happened to the, to the springs here and uh, to anything, of, to whatever the defects are, I don't know about them. I tried air spraying this, uh, this area. It, my hope was that were there a flicker or a piece of dust or a debris inside I would be able to move it out and fix it. I also tried to um, look at tutorials to open up the lens but that's just way above my league. Uh, I'm not that proficient mechanically so as a solution I actually got well surprise surprise a second Lumix camera. Let me just get another battery and I will show you what this one does. This is another TZ12, TZ7, sorry about that. And this one actually has a working lens and everything's working on it except for the screen which is broken. So what I plan to do is get the screen of this lens, of this camera and put it on this camera, especially considering that, well, this one, the, the one below, let me just close both of them. So this uh, spare, this uh, parts bin camera, um, donor camera, donor, part donor camera is actually looking better than this one. So you can see this has a lot of scratches everywhere. This one, not so much. The paint looks nicer. The front is a bit nicer. Both of them have scuffs and scratches, but this one is in better shape. So what I'll do, I'll just take the screen out of this one and replace it with this uh, in this unit and also by that I mean I won't be taking the whole back plate off because I can do the lazy thing and do that but instead I will be um, reaching inside and removing just the LCD panel and uh, putting it underneath this better looking uh, sheet of glass so I have a better working camera. I don't know, it's just nostalgic. I'm just nostalgic at this point about these cameras because yeah, they, this one has given me quite a lot of satisfaction over the years I've used it. I always thought it to be very elegant, very sleek. Uh, it was just, you know, uh, you take the camera out and you just pop and do a picture and that's it. Uh, back then in 2008, <laughs> you must understand that being able to focus and to, you know, to do a photo without blurring it uh, was a quite a big deal. You didn't think about bokeh effects or uh, artistic impressions or stuff like that. So you just wanted to get a clear picture and I'll put some samples in the video so you can see what I'm actually talking about and they were fairly good. The color rendition was, well there was a vivid setting which was quite pleasing similar to what Samsung is doing with their top tier Android phones. So yeah, quite the nice camera to have when I was you know younger and a bit more <laughs> naive if you will in terms of uh, tech uh, reality. I wasn't going to spend hundreds or thousands or even hundreds of euros on a camera so I got this on a budget. I actually paid about 50 euros for it back in the day so it wasn't much and it did the job. It was fairly cheap and yeah any camera, any camera with the least tech and artistic impressions was way above my pay grade back then so I didn't want to spend money. I just wanted 
basically what I did I, I was taking a lot of pictures of stuff I was selling on the internet and yeah for me it was good enough and the occasional holiday you know trip to the mountains and stuff like that plus the high zoom rate was impressive and actually you could get good bokeh effect but when shooting macro pictures so it, say you saw a bee on a flower, a bug, a butterfly, stuff like that, when it stood still and you managed to get a quick photo of it, everything in the background was nice and blurry, so there was that, the more artistic part of things. What I could do with it now that I have two of them, um, I could turn one of them into an infrared or a black and white camera, which could be an interesting project. Uh, but first I'd like to open them up and fix one of them with a correct uh, LCD and no I won't be doing that right now because I'm not really that proficient with YouTube videos either so it's kind of a long process for me to set up the whole camera and filming system and by the time I, I do it I'm quite exhausted and I have to be very careful about opening these um, these screws and I'm well I'm not that I'm not a specialist in terms of um, fine mechanics so you get the picture if you want to um, see a, a teardown of a TZ7 there's enough videos online uh, about them so thank you for watching be sure to check out my channel now and again hit a like maybe a subscribe if you're feeling generous uh, I'll be uploading weird forgotten tech stuff for sure in the next coming in the following weeks so yeah thanks again and see you around